Hello, children of God. Do you know any shepherds? Now, despite the fact that I'm carrying this wonderful plastic shepherd's crook and wearing a blanket on my head, I'm, I'm not actually a shepherd, but I can pretend. Now, what is a shepherd's job after all? What does a shepherd do? That's right, they take care of sheep. And that's an important job because sheep are useful for a lot of things. They're great animals, but they're not always that smart and they need a lot of taking care of. If left to themselves, sheep would probably just kind of wander and roam around and bump into each other and get lost. So they need a shepherd to lead and guide them. The shepherd is responsible for making sure that the sheep get to good green pastures so that they can eat, so they can graze on the nice grass. And the shepherd will also take them to drink, to get water so that they can stay nourished and healthy. And the shepherd will also make sure that he knows where his sheep are. So if a sheep decides to start wandering away from the flock, which they kind of often do, the shepherd can grab it and gently bring it back in to be with the rest of its little sheepy buddies so they can stay together and stay safe. And the shepherd will also make sure to protect his sheep. So if there's something like a wolf or a lion or a bear that comes and tries to attack the flock, the shepherd is willing to put himself at risk to go attack that predator and save his flock and keep his sheep safe. It's a very important job. And the sheep get to know the shepherd. They spend a lot of time together, so they know one another well. The shepherd can call out for his sheep and they recognize his voice and come and find him because they know that he will keep them safe and will protect them. And the shepherd knows which sheep are which, so if Fluffy starts to wander off, the shepherd knows to go and bring it back. Well, you know, it turns out you might not think that you know many shepherds. There are still shepherds out and about in the world today. But you do actually know the best shepherd of all. You know a good shepherd. I know him too. Do you know who the good shepherd is? That's right, it's Jesus. See, the Bible talks a lot about how God, the Lord, Jesus, is our good shepherd. Because we recognize that we're kind of like these sheep. If left to our own devices, yeah, we would just go all over the place. We would probably wander away and we sometimes think that we can take care of ourselves, but we really can't. Every breath that we take, everything that we have comes from God and we can't do anything without him. We have to have him to lead us. See, in the Old Testament, King David, he talked about how God is a shepherd. Now. King David was actually a shepherd himself before he became king. So he knew a thing or two about sheep. And he said that God was a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He said he leads me to green pastures and beside still waters and takes care of me and his rod and staff comfort me. So David was comforted to think of God as a shepherd, as leading us. Well, Jesus said about himself, I am the good shepherd. Jesus said, I know my sheep. And they know me. They know my voice and they know to follow me. And Jesus also said, the good shepherd is willing to lay down his life for his sheep. But the good shepherd, a really good shepherd, is willing to be at risk, to be in danger, to fight off whatever harm might come to his sheep, to take care of them and keep them safe. And that's exactly what Jesus did for us. He was not only willing to put himself in danger, he truly did lay down his life for us. He really went to the cross for us, died for us, and gave his life for us and suffered and was in pain for our sake because he does care. And he wants to lead us. God loves us. God knows us, knows each and every one of us. If one of us wanders away, he wants to gently pull us back to him. And he wants us to follow him. The sheep follow the shepherd because they know that the shepherd will bring them to good things, will give them what they need. God gives us what we need. God gives us love. He takes care of 
our physical needs as well as our spiritual needs. And sometimes it's hard, and sometimes we don't understand. But we know that he laid down his life for us, that he loves us and wants us to be in his flock, to be his sheep and to be with him. And we know that we can count on God, we can count on God for every good thing, and we can follow him. How do we do that? Well, we read our Bibles to know what he says. That helps us to recognize his voice, and we can pray. We might not always think we hear him physically with our ears, but we can still listen. And sometimes God uses other people, friends and parents and teachers, to help us know which way to go and to guide us and direct us, just like that shepherd does. So we can rejoice that God is our good shepherd. We can be comforted to know he wants us right by him, close to him, and that we want to stay close to him too. We can be comforted to know that he'll do anything to keep us in his flock and to keep us safe, that he gives us what we need, that he will guide and protect and take care of us. See, those comforting words that David wrote about God being the good shepherd, they were not written in easy times. David had a lot of troubles, but he still knew God was there and that God would take care of him. And Jesus, he was willing to lay down his life. He knew that he wanted us with him and that he loves us. So we can be thankful for that. And we can be glad that God is our good shepherd. We can lean on him, follow him, rely on him, and trust him every day of our lives. And he will keep us in those green pastures. So why don't we say a prayer and thank God for being our good shepherd. Dear God, you are the good shepherd. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for leading us and guiding us. Thank you for keeping us safe and giving us what we need. Help us to trust you and to follow you every day. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. As always, this is just one way to share the Good Shepherd story or the sheep elements. There are many others, but we hope this gave you some ideas that you can use with your student audience. As always, we have new videos coming out every week. We have message ideas and craft ideas, so feel free to like, subscribe, tune in, go make some disciples. We'll see you next time.